Okay, this video is going to be all about magnetism. We're going to learn about mm -hmm. magnets, magnets, and why they work, and uh, and what their connection is to electricity. So, first of all, um, magnets are usually lumped in with electricity. Mm -hmm. They call it electricity and magnetism. Electricity and magnetism. And, uh, and I usually lump the two of them together. Like if you take a class in college, um, their whole class is dedicated to what's called e &M, electricity and magnetism. Now the core underlying principle of magnetism, the reason why magnetism exists, is because any kind of magnetism comes from the motion of charged particles. So basically if you have a particle and that particle is charged and it moves, it could vibrate, it could spin, any kind of motion, and, uh, and that particle, that charged particle is now magnetic. I have to turn off my sheep. I'm watching sheep in the background. Uh, I have to turn them off. So a little background. Um, particles don't have to have mass. There is a particle called a photon. That's what light is made out of. And, and photons don't have any mass at all. Um, and photons don't have any charge at all. So light can't be magnetic. You're not about to bend a laser with a magnet. It's not happening. And that's because light or photons, they don't have mass or charge. Now there are particles that have mass but no charge. There are little teeny tiny ones. They call them neutrinos. And there are bigger ones that you know as neutrons. But those guys don't have a charge. And so they're not magnetic. They're actually, neutrons and neutrinos are really hard to work with because you can't push them around with magnets. So what's my point? I'm really kind of getting towards fields. So if you have a particle and that particle has mass, it has a gravitational field, it exerts gravitational force, um, it can be pulled in by other masses, it can pull other masses, it does not push, that's not the way gravity works. Now if you take that particle with mass and then you also give it an electric charge, the net particle has an electric field. It exerts an electric force on other charged particles. Now, if you take that charged particle and, and move it, if that charged particle is also moving, now it also has a magnetic field. It exerts a magnetic force on other moving charged particles. So again, to take it back up to the top, magnetism comes from the motion of charged particles. But there's a catch. Turns out that electrons not only vibrate, but they also spin. They're moving all the time. That means that electrons, each and every one of them, electrons are magnetic. So if every electron is magnetic, why can't we pick everything up with a magnet? In fact, there are very few things that, are, that you can pick up with a magnet. And there's two reasons for this. One is that electrons usually pair up. Um, one electron has its north pole pointing upwards, its friend has a north pole pointing downwards, and then those magnetic fields kind of cancel each other. And so we say the net magnetic moment is zero of those two electrons, and so they cancel. But then it's like, well, if most electrons pair up, then why is there any magnetism at all? If it all cancels, why can you pick things up with a magnet? This has to do with the magnetic force of each and every electron. Yeah, an electron is a magnet, but it's really, really weak. It's a teeny tiny electron. What do you want from it? But if you get a lot of electrons in motion in the same direction, or if you get a bunch of spinning, vibrating electrons and line them up, now you have a much larger magnetic domain, much stronger, and now you can have a really strong effective magnetic field. So this is how permanent magnets work. The electrons in a permanent magnet are all lined up in these magnetic domains. They reinforce each other's field and they make a much larger magnetic field for that permanent magnet. Now notice that I put permanent in quotes because they're not permanent forever. And in fact, if you take a magnet and you bang it around or if you heat it up, the electrons can get knocked out of alignment. And if they lose their alignment, then they no longer reinforce each other the way they did. And that magnet gets weaker. You can remagnetize the magnet though with a second outside magnetic field. You can use an electromagnet for that or something like that. An outside magnetic field will realign those electrons and your magnet is back in business. In fact, you can take a regular screwdriver 
and a bar magnet. And if you take the bar magnet and you rub it along the screwdriver, as if you like kind of stroke the screwdriver, as if you almost like you're combing it with the magnet and just keep on running it along its length, running it along its length, um, you can actually magnetize the screwdriver and when you put a screw on the screwdriver, it holds onto it a little tiny bit, which makes screwing that screw much easier. I brought up the outside magnetic field. When I say an outside magnetic field, I literally mean if you like bring a magnet nearby. It could be a permanent magnet or an electromagnet, which we'll talk about soon. Um, but if you just have a nearby magnet, having that magnetic field there. So there are some things that you can pick up with a magnet but they are not normally permanent magnets themselves. Um, an example of this would be a paperclip. An example of something that's not paramagnetic is a penny. You're not gonna pick up a penny with a magnet, but you can pick up a paperclip. Now, the reason you can pick up that paperclip is because when you bring the magnet nearby, that magnetic field aligns the electrons in the paperclip, and in the paperclip, because of its aligned electrons, is now magnetic itself. And, can, and will respond to your permanent magnet. The permanent magnet will pick it up. But if you bring the magnetic field away, the electrons go back to the way they were, they're no longer aligned, and your paperclip is no longer magnetic. So basically, to sum this thing up, paramagnetic objects are not magnetic by themselves, but they can be picked up by, they respond to another magnet, like paperclips. A good example of this is if you're in a junkyard and you have a huge electromagnet, they'll drop the electromagnet into a giant pile of metal and turn the electromagnet on. By putting the current through it, then it activates the electromagnet. Anything that is paramagnetic, it's not normally magnetic by itself, but it responds to magnets. Anything that's paramagnetic will jump to the electromagnet and it can pull that material away. And they can then make two piles, a pile of magnetic metals and a pile of non-magnetic metals. And that's worth their while, that's worth their money, because the non-magnetic materials are things like aluminum and copper, and that's worth a lot of money to a junkyard. Now, there's a couple of other things that I want to get into, like what do magnetic fields look like, you know, what sorts of problems or questions could they ask about magnets, but this is the these are the fundamental principles of what the heck magnetism is and how and why it works. And so we talked about the permanent magnets in their electron domains, um, but permanent magnets aren't really used that often. If you're talking about industry or commercial applications, you're looking at an electromagnet. And electromagnets work with electricity, duh, that's why it's called an electromagnet. But the reason why it works is because any current, car current carrying wire generates a magnetic field. The reason why that's true goes all the way back to the first principle I said, is that moving charged particles have a magnetic field. Well, if you have a wire and you put a current through it, what is a current but moving charges? And so if you put a current through a wire, that wire makes a magnetic field. Now, of course, the electrons are in the wire whether you have a current or not and the electrons are moving and vibrating and spinning in the wire, whether you have a current or not. But a wire without a current in it, those electrons are just kind of doing their own thing. They're all in different di directions. They're all over the place. They have no appreciable magnetic field. But a current carrying wire, all of those chargers are flowing together in one direction. They work together uh, to make a stronger magnetic field that's actually appreciable. And electromagnets are adjustable. Permanent magnet, yeah, I guess you could make a bigger permanent magnet. Like if you had a neodymium magnet, you could get a bigger one and it would be stronger. Um, but with an electromagnet, to make it stronger, all you need to do is just pump more current in. As you increase the current, the strength of the electromagnet increases because you have more moving charges through that wire. More moving charges means a stronger magnetic field. And you can get a massively strong magnetic field out of these electromagnets. Um, they've been using electromagnets to pick up cars. Again, going back to our junkyard, you can use an electromagnet to pick up a car. Um, they have electromagnets. That's how you get an MRI. The reason why when you go and get an MRI, it's a big tube and it clanks around is because those are really big, really strong magnets that are making a magnetic field. 
That magnetic field is so strong that the water molecules in your body actually respond to that magnetic field. They're polar. They're polar molecules. You learned that in chemistry. They'll respond to the magnetic field. When they shut the magnet off, those molecules spin and make uh, radiation. Make kind of, I think it's radio waves. Um, and that's picked up by the MRI machine, and they can take a picture of your muscles. Um, but my point is that the MRI machine is a very, very strong magnet. They put a lot of current through those things. Okay, so let's summarize. One, magnetism is caused by moving electrically charged particles. A permanent magnet is an object where the electrons are aligned in domains. They can be knocked out of alignment and you lose the magnetism, or they can be realigned with an outside magnetic field and they can regain their magnetism but they tend to stick there as opposed to paramagnetic material that becomes a magnet in an outside magnetic field. Like the electrons will align with an outside magnetic field, but if you take away that outside magnetic field, those electrons go back to the way they were. So only when the outside magnetic field is there do those electrons align, but they don't stay aligned. Just as a side note, there are some materials like iron and wrought iron fences that don't start magnetic to begin with, but if you leave it in a magnetic field for long enough, the electrons will align and then stay aligned. And so that's why if you go to really old wrought iron fences like they have in say Philadelphia, and you run a compass near them, the compass will actually be, will wiggle in response to the wrought iron fence. Now what's a compass? What does that have to do with magnetic fields? We'll get back to that. Then finally, we have electromagnet, um, and the electromagnet is magnet magnetic by virtue of its current. Um, and those are handy because if you can just increase the current, then you can increase the strength of the magnetic field and make some really strong magnetic fields if need be. So there you go. Um, I have some other videos I'm going to show you guys, and... Um, that I'll share with you any of your notes. I may be making more videos in magnetism, we'll have to see. Um, but uh, for now, you should be good. Like if Magneto tries to roll up on you and he's like, oh, I know all about the magnetism, you can be like, yeah. Cool story, bro. I know more about magnetism than you. I know that it's a, it's made by the motion of moving charges and Magneto is gonna be like, oh no, I am less scared. And then he's gonna run away. So yeah, thanks guys, thanks. I'll write it on Magneto's cape. Imagine Magneto's cape actually said thanks guys. It'd be kind of interesting. And um, so yeah, uh, I hope that kind of sets like a foundation as to what the heck magnetism is and how magnets work. Um, and uh, yeah, so have a good day or night, depending on when you're watching this, bye.